So today I'm going to be making what I consider to be the best gluten-free bread I have ever made. And this is 17 years in the making. I've made a lot of gluten-free bread that have ranged from eh, to like pretty terrible. This one is actually squishy and chewy and it has that like yeasty taste of real bread. So I'm gonna take you through how I make it. I will link down below where I got the recipe from. I've modified it very slightly to make it my own and you're also gonna notice I'm terrible about measuring but ultimately I'm gonna tell you how I make it. We're Nathan and Tiffany. We own a wellness practice where we have dedicated our professional lives to helping people achieve, maintain, and enjoy wellness. We also love a great adventure. This is the channel where those two loves align. So the first thing that you need to do is get one and a half cups of warm water. I basically get the hottest water out of my sink and then now you're gonna add the yeast and the magical ingredient, which is psyllium husk. For me, I have them down to two measuring spoons because they're made out of ceramic and I've broken them. So you need four and a half teaspoons of yeast, which happens to be one and a half tablespoons. So I'm gonna live dangerously. I'm pretty imp imprecise when I bake. Probably should measure more than I do. We're gonna call that good. You'll need one tablespoon of psyllium husk. Then you need to mix it and let it sit for 10 minutes because it needs to turn into a gel. Boom. And I find that the psyllium husk actually, it's very hard to unclump, so I use a whisk. But don't go too crazy because yeast is kind of sensitive. And now I'm gonna let that sit while I assemble the rest of it. Okay, first we're gonna put the wet ingredients in. And I recommend that you put the olive oil in before the honey because you're gonna see a little magical trick. You need three tablespoons of each. So a tablespoon of one, olive oil. So as I'm doing the olive oil, I'm coating the spoon. So if you've ever tried to bake with honey and it's really sticky and you're like, I'm getting half of it out and half of it sticking to the surface, if you put the oil first, it will just slide right off the spoon. So you need three tablespoons of this too. Ooh, it's kind of hard to squeeze, I'm shaking. And see, it just slides right off. And the third one. See, as I go, it's getting a little less slippy, but look, no honey, or very little honey. Okay, two teaspoons of salt. I don't own a teaspoon anymore. And again, I don't measure anything, so I have a salt cellar here, and I'm gonna say, that's two teaspoons. I'm gonna mix that up. And that's kind of our wet ingredients. Now I need to mix in two and a half cups of gluten-free flour. I have really appreciated, this is a new one for me, about, I don't know, a few months ago I found this one. Two and a half cups. Now, if you're a really precise baker, you're supposed to like sift it onto parchment paper and spoon it in and, cut, and all that fancy stuff. I don't do that. So if it makes you feel better, the bread still comes out really good even though I'm not that precise. This is my version of fluffing flour. And then I do, as I spill it everywhere, kind of get rid of the excess. Here's one. <laughs> I'm such a messy baker. So in baking, it's like chemistry, so you're supposed to be super precise. Clearly, I don't pay attention to that. When you're cooking, you can be like a little more wild and have fewer errors. There we go approximately two and a half cups. And if you have one of those beautiful, fancy KitchenAid things, and that you only use like once a year, here's your opportunity. But I don't have one of those. I have this very loud, ancient mixer. So we're gonna fast forward through this. I'm gonna mix it up. Okay, so the first thing I do is I take the honey mixture and the flour and mix it together. And it makes it almost like a type of crumble. And then I've already done that. And then I add, the psyllium and the yeast and the water and it should be like this stretchy gooey gel and this is what gives it the consistency of glutinous bread so it says to mix it for two minutes and then you're going to add two egg whites and mix it for another two minutes again i don't get too caught up on the details i do approximately two minutes until it feels about right so you're going to notice this crawls up the mixers so you either have to shake it down or you have to get wild, pick it up, let it fling off, and then resubmerge it. I think I think the uh, living dangerously with the flinging around is the fun part, but not everybody agrees with me. See, it's like this really gooey, gelatinous. Which, if you were making yeast bread and you were kneading it and you know 
getting it prepared, that process of the kneading makes it the gluten, you know, turn it chewy. So we're kind of cheating with this psyllium husk. Scoop it up off the side a little bit. Whoops. <laughs> so in my opinion, that's the right consistency. It's like this gooey blob. Now I have to separate egg whites. If you're clean and fancy like good people, you should do it with the shells. But, oh, and also, did you know, if you take two eggs and you smash them together, only one will win. And you can have a little egg war with your kids and, you know, the final egg standing is the winner. But watch. See, only one is going to break. And then I pour it over my hand, kind of wiggle it around, the big boogery one at the end. And then I squeeze my fingers together and chop it off. And you have your egg whites. It is actually easier to crack an egg if you do it on a flat surface than like the edge of the bowl. You're more likely to have eggshells flop into your thing if you do it on the edge of the bowl. So that's what I did on the counter. Now, as you can see, if we're not careful, we're going to get a raging case of salmonella in my house because it's all over my hands and all over my counter. So again, follow your own precautions. <laughs> So now we're gonna do the exact same thing and mix in the egg whites. Look, the eggs are all over the counter. This is what a good chef would have done. I would have put it back in the bowl. Don't come for me in the comments about my culinary skills. I think that's good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull it off the beaters and then I'm gonna put it into a greased bread pan. I just greased it with the same olive oil that I put in the bread. See, this is where I have the visions of it turning on. It's like gonna, you know, take my spatula and turn it into a projectile. And this is where I think it's fun to fling the rest off. Kids, don't try this at home. I take it all down from the edge into the bowl. And you'll notice it's not exactly like yeast dough, but it's it's way more similar because usually gluten-free cooking is, it's, it's more like a, a quick bread consistency. This is closer. And so I'm gonna take it, the whole blob, and I'll plop it in to my bread pan. See, it's it's sticky, but it's not as batter-like as what is typically in gluten-free baked goods. And then I'm just gonna spread it around a little bit, and then I'm gonna let it rise for about 40 minutes. 40, 45, until it rises up to like the height of a normal bread. And don't be discouraged if in the first 15 or 20 minutes you're like, Crap, it's not working. It seems like the last 20 minutes of the proofing is when it really starts to do the job. The recipe didn't say to cover it, so I, I haven't done that. But if, you're, if your house feels kind of chilly, you might want to cover it with a cloth to trap in some of the heat. But it doesn't say to do it in the recipe, and I haven't done it yet. Okay, so now our bread has been rising for 40 minutes. But use, use some intuition here, depending on how hot or cold your house is, you know, the season, you might be 35 minutes, you might be 45 minutes, but this is what we've got now. So it rose, uh, I would say it doubled in size. Now, if I wanted to leave it for another five minutes, maybe it would get a bit bigger, but it's also going to rise slightly in the cooking process. In the recipe that I use, she used metric units and took her conversion to Celsius was 390 degrees. I just use 400 degrees. I also have a stove with a knob is very imprecise. So your first couple of loaves, you sort of need to experiment and figure out what is your oven running a little hot, a little cold. You can also use an internal thermometer inside the oven. That's a great thing to do to get an idea. Does my run oven run a little hot or cold? My oven runs a little cold. So I set it to 400. We're going to cook this again anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes, and you're looking for it to develop a nice brown, but certainly not burnt crust. And then you're supposed to let it cool all the way before you cut it. But who in the planet has that kind of self-control? Because the most delicious thing about bread is when it's still warm. So I always cut one end off when it's still a little bit warm. I'll show you later how squishy and delicious it is. All right, so it's cooked. Borderline overcooked it. I probably should have checked it about five minutes ago. It's not burnt, but we'll see how it comes out when I cut it. So what I found is if you just pull the bread a little side to side, it comes out really easy. So I just pull a little this way, a little this way, and boom, done. 
it's still a little steamy, so we're going to see. I'm going to get a knife. So in our minimalism journey, we don't have a, uh, a bread knife, so I want to use a steak knife. Whatever. When was the last time you actually saw gluten-free bread that was squishy? That's very exciting. Let's get Nathan to try it. So obviously it's not going to be good as good as regular bread, but what do you think? For gluten-free bread. Like, it's pretty good. It's good. If you are gluten-free, give this recipe a try. Obviously, if there's any ingredients in it that you're allergic to or sensitive to, see if you can modify around it. But there's lots of ways to modify stuff. But I think that the key ingredient in this is the psyllium husk. I think that's what gives it this chewy consistency that's missing from gluten-free bread. And it's moist. It's not dry. Sometimes eating gluten-free products is like eating cardboard or sawdust. It's so bad. But I think I've got a winner. So what did I say the other day? I've cracked the gluten-free bread code. 